This is a wonderful, wonderful time of the year, and I'm glad that you are here today to see where we start out. It is speech contest season. This is where people go to make leaps and bounds in their communication, speaking ability. And all of you have some roles. My role today is model speaker and chief judge. So I need to let you know all you need to know about speech contests. We have our timer in the back, Mr. Pastore, who has a form, and he will be recording the times of the evaluators. He will also be providing them time signals, either with the lights or if the lights fail with those lovely backup cards. Mr. Pastore is the only person in the room who needs to be concerned about how long somebody spoke. Unlike our regular club meetings, you are still going to vote for who you thought was the best evaluator, whether they go over time or not. So we still do care about your vote. Nancy has agreed to be my enforcer today. She is our sergeant at arms. So when the time comes, Nancy will escort our two contestants, Lisa and Gray, from the room, ideally far enough from the room that they cannot hear what's going on here. You will then give them five minutes with which to organize, plan their outline, their evaluation, come up with their notes, and at the end of five minutes, you will bring the first evaluator, send the first evaluator back to the room and give the first evaluator his notes. You will hold on to the notes of the second evaluator until the first evaluator is done, probably three and a half minutes, and then give the second evaluator her notes and let them come back into the room. The rest of you are judges. I know, I know, we pride ourselves on being in a safe and supportive environment or a judgment-free zone, except for today. Today, your job is not to provide feedback the way a general evaluator will. Your job is not to come up with ideas of improvement for the evaluators. Your job is to pick a winner. And that is why you have this evaluation contest, judges, guide, and ballot. And while you have that right now, I'd like you to fold this almost in half, maybe a third, probably somewhere in the middle of the four or five line, like so, up and down. And on the left-hand side, in one of the spots, write down gray. And the right-hand side, write down Lisa. Those are our evaluators, that is the order in which they will be evaluated. And you have four weighted categories to think about. The first category, and the most important, is the analytical quality. And on the back there's a description. But the analytical quality talks about how effective the evaluator is. Every evaluation should analyze the strengths and weaknesses of the presentation. But does the evaluator have clear and logical comments? Does the evaluator identify specific strengths and weaknesses or just kind of a general whitewash? When I think about evaluating analytical quality when I am judging, I look for the fact and ask myself the question, is the evaluator talking about the same speech I just heard or are they just giving some sort of random evaluation? You will want to score that on a scale of 0 to 40. High numbers, 40 are great. 0 to 16, fair. So somewhere in the middle. So I encourage you to anchor your expectations. And again, these numbers are for your reference. So where did you perceive the analytical quality of the speaker? 
The second characteristic, the most important, second most important category is the recommendations, and that's out of 30 possible points. So that's a zero to 30 scale, 30 is being great, which talks about are there specific recommendations the speaker makes on the model speaker? Who in this case is me, right now. Are there practical recommendations? Are they helpful, positive? Do they enable the speaker to improve his or her next presentation? Then we get down to the last two categories. And these are both out of a possible 15 points. They're not weighted as heavily. One of them is technique. And I think of that as the style of the evaluator. Do they come up with a technique that's sensitive to the feelings and needs of the speaker? Do they have a little bit of style, a little bit of oomph? And then the summation is the last 15 points, which is basically, does the evaluation have a conclusion? And if so, how good is it? So after you hear Greg's evaluation, you will have a minute to provide scores, and then total up your scores at the bottom. Then fold it over. So when Lisa comes in, you're not looking at Greg's scores. At the end of Lisa's evaluation, you will again have a minute of silence, or two minutes in this case, to provide scores. And after that, total up the numbers. When you get to the bottom part of your evaluation form, this is what's important. You need to write down a first place and a second place person. You must sign your ballot at the bottom. You can go ahead and do that now. Don't put down first or second place, though. We actually want to have fair competition. And also print your name at the bottom. When it comes time to collect the ballots, and I, you don't have one because you're a sergeant in arms. All right, that's what I was hoping. I, but see, I saw that and I reacted. Because <laughs> you're not going to hear the okay, first right, evaluation. Right, right. The second one you will hear, the first one you won't have the opportunity to hear. Tear it off. This will be collected by at least or myself, and at which point you are done. The top port is secret. I say take it home, throw it out, eat it, whatever you want to do. But do not leave it behind. At the end of the contest, we do not talk to the contestants necessarily about what happened. This gets more formal at the area level, at the division level, at the district level. This is the club level. These people are your friends. They're not your frenemies. They are your friends. So if you want to give them ideas about what you thought was great after the meeting's over, I'm not going to say you can't do that. But we don't need to encourage any additional relationship strife between Lisa and Gray, <laughs> who are willing to throw down in public for our club's success and entertainment. Keep those confidential. There is one additional rule to be aware of as judges, and that is the protest rule. And this is also a new rule that applies this year to the evaluation, con to all speech contests. It used to only apply to certain ones, which is the originality rule. Every speech in a contest must be at least 75% original to the speaker. The speaker's own words. Now, the speaker could have given the speech 100 times before, but as long as you're the only one who's done it, that's fine. But on the other hand, if Greg stands up and instead of providing an evaluation, just merely sings the introduction to Shaft, <laughs> then his evaluation is not 75% original, at which point you may write protest on your ballot. Now, if you write protest, please still rank and score the speakers because the protest might not be valid, but they might be disqualified in terms of a protest. So write that on there and then we will talk about what happens at that point. The contestants may also protest. Everybody here except for Paul and Nancy gets to protest. They don't get to protest because there are other enforcers in other matters of things. But that is really all that you need to know about judging a speech contest. You do have a ballot for the humorous contest which has some other categories. When Telma presents because she is not competing, we still want to use this because we want her to give the best speech at the end of September in the area contest. So please look at that and provide her feedback on those points, ideas, 
feel free to write all over that form because that's what she's trying to do then when she does compete is to get the greatest number of points. So the more ideas we can give her, the better, more successful she will be. Thank you very much for your time. Mr. Contest Chair.